Hello and welcome, this is Rufamonger, and in this edition of Let's Learn Mortal Kombat, we're going to be talking about the concept of turns in Mortal Kombat 11. Now this comes really heavily requested to me, as a lot of people are having trouble with just, you know, following up with anything, because a lot of people are just mashing on their down one, their down jab, and a lot of people don't know when it is their turn, so hopefully this guy can help alleviate your issues. So now I'm going to show you a very common situation in this game, Mortal Kombat 11, and this is true for every Mortal Kombat game, but if you are newer to the franchise, this is probably exactly what's frustrating you. So I'm going to block this move. And now as you see, clear as day, so Devora is negative 6 on block. So it is very clear, she is negative frames, therefore it is my turn. I can do whatever I want, uh, and if she hits a button, I'm going to smack her. So what's going to happen here, I'm just going to be smart here, I'm just going to go for my combo starter here. And I'll get a big combo. It's safe on block anyways. So if she dares hit a button, I get my big combo and it's going to be awesome, right? So let's see how that really works out in a practical situation. Oh, I got jabbed out. Well, maybe I did a mistake. Let's try that one more time. Nope, I get jabbed out again. So she's negative, yet she hit me. Well, what's happening there? And it has to do with the attack height system in Mortal Kombat. So there are four heights of attacks. There are highs, there are mids, there are lows, and there are overheads. And in Mortal Kombat, if a foe is ducking in any way, shape, or form, a high, a high will always clearly go over their head. So when the enemy is doing something like their down jab here, even though they are negative, if I try to quote unquote take my turn after a negative on block move, and I try to take my turn with a high move and they down one, they will have effectively stolen the turn from me and they get their hit and I don't. So this exact situation here, then how do we beat it? Well, we can do this, I suppose. And I can down one, they're down one. So uh, my down jab will beat theirs because it is fast enough to have enough frame advantage, but that's not very fun and interesting now, is it? You know, uh, yeah, they took a risk, they're negative, but if you just poked them, and that's it, you know, pokes don't do very much damage, you want to go for something bigger. So what you need to find is go into your move list, and once again here in the move list, it tells you everything you need to know about your moves. Uh, as you can see here, this move is a high, this move is a mid, high, mid, high, mid, all that kind of stuff, and you need to know the attack heights of your moves. So what you want to find in this situation, where the enemy is negative on block, but not punishable, but it is your turn, you want to find a mid or low hitting move that is relatively fast. So in this example here we're going to use here, we're going to be using Kano's forward and two, which is 13 frame startup. So if the enemy is negative six on block and they do their eight frame crouching jab, what's going to happen is we're going to win. So we win. You can see here it says counter hit. And not only did we win... We can actually get a bit of a combo here. So... When you have this situation, you want to be looking for your move that is best suited to beat a counter-attack down jab, try to steal the turn back, and not only, you know, beat it, because once again, everyone's down one, you will always win. If they try to hit a button, you're always going to win, but you're trying to look for more damage. So in this scenario here, this little combo gives us a nice 25%, which is a far cry better than the 2% we get from the jab. So you want to look to maximize your damage in this situation. Now, the example we have shown you in this video is very much a unique dynamic between Kano and Devora, the two characters we have picked, right? So, every character situation, uh, depending on the two characters, is going to be different. Some characters have very fast mids and it's very easy to work with. Some characters, maybe not so much. Some characters have strings that are only like negative 2 on block. And if you went for a negative, uh, if you went for the 4 2 move here with 13 frame start, and they were only negative 2 on block and they went for the down 1, they're still going to win, right? So, you have to know your move set and you have to know their move set. But generally speaking, if for whatever reason you are fighting enemies or are very prone to just smashing down 1, on moves uh, after they are negative on block, you have to keep this in mind. And at the very least, remember, once again, as we already said, you can always down one them back and steal the turn. And speaking of that, I want to show you an example where just the plain old down one can lead to a decent little bit of damage as it has what we call jailing. So say they are trying to mash down one, you down one them back, right? Now we can look at the frame advantage here. So it says here that on the frame advantage, we have 10 frames of advantage. And you see here, when we hit them, they have the little hit animation, and Devorah's going back to crouching afterwards. So, as we have a high here, our stand 2, 
Command notice says it has a startup of 9 frames. So it's still a high, it can't hit Crouching Devora, but if we smack her with this down jab here and we have 10 frames of advantage, we can actually jail into the stand 2, meaning even if they're holding down, they have to be hit by the stand 2 because the jab restands them very briefly. As you can see right there, Devora is holding down indeed, and she's still getting hit by that stand too, because even though it is a high, she is now jailed, she cannot go back to crouch until that 10th frame of advantage, and my standing 2 comes out one frame faster than that, so she has to get hit by it. Now, Devora absolutely, after the move, she is absolutely allowed to block. This is not a combo, she is allowed to block, but it will allow us to keep our turn. So as you can see there, for them trying to mash and you know just get down one all day long here, I have managed to jail them into the stand 2-4 combo for Kano and get some decent damage out of it. So jailing is a concept of people who just want to mash down one all day. If say you don't have a fast mid to beat them out, you can at least down one them and then jail them into a combo of your choice. So on top of jailing, there are other concepts to work with too. Jailing can be somewhat strict on the timing and uh, might take you some practice. And one thing that's a lot easier to work with, and this covers, this is a concept that applies to much more than just this video too, and it's going to be a big part of this game, is what we call whiff punishing. So say we do our down one here, and it's our turn technically, and say you're not comfortable with the jailing concept yet, especially if, say, it involves a high. Because uh, if you're even a frame off of the jail and uh, it's a high and they go back to down oneing, they're going to get it all over again. It's going to be their turn all over again. So what you want to do here is either when they are negative or after you get down one, any concept where you are advantage and they are negative, just walk backwards for a split second and let them do an attack. It could be a down one or whatever. Let them do their attack and then punish that attack that misses. So as you see there, Kano, once again here, very good at whiff punishing due to his uh, back three crushing blow as it does a lot of damage and has a damage over time effect as well. So all you have to do is just simply walk back and when you see them starting to attack, you do your own long range attack and then punish them for just smashing on those buttons. So whiff punishing, once again, is a, will be prevalent at all levels of play and it's a lot more than just this situation, but it is another thing you can do to just punish someone who's just going crazy mashing down one. All down ones are indeed themselves negative on block. Now the numbers are different character to character to be sure, but a block down one might give you just enough time to walk out once again and while they're mashing then you just go and punish the mash so there's a lot of ways to deal with this so in the end i guess the biggest thing i could say about taking your turn is if you know someone's prone to just smashing down one all day or down three or down four depending on the character right just make sure you don't always go for your highs you're gonna have to basically uh beat it out of them the want to just go ducking and just doing ducking attacks over and over no matter what the ducking attack might be mids and lows and overheads will always beat the crouching attacks as long as you know the appropriate frame data will line up with it if you do a move that's very slow then obviously the down one or uppercut or whatever mash they're doing is still going to lose so it is behooven to you to go into your move list find your frame data find your fast mids find your fast lows and so you know when the enemy is negative uh, they don't try to steal their turn right back by going right into a down one or an uppercut. Uh, so find those quick mids, find those quick lows, and those quick mids and quick lows will easily stuff what the enemy tries to do uh, when it comes to trying to steal their turn back. Now, depending on the kind of player you're fighting, you know, they might be more prone to doing, say, uppercuts after uh, something negative than, you know, just the down one, which can lead to a lot more damage. But the uppercut still prone to the same problem. It is a lot easier to use a mid or a low over an overhead to be able to beat out the uppercut as it is a lot slower than just the down one. So everything kind of that we just went over applies much the same. Now, obviously, the reward, if they get that uppercut, it's going to be a lot more devastating, right? And on uh, the walk back stuff here, kind of whiff punish, on some characters' uppercuts, that might not be as applicable here. Uh, some characters like Shao Kahn have very far forward reaching uppercut so you might not want just be able to walk back in the same manner but the rest of the principles still apply just be rest assured once again please check the frame down on your moves and know this if you can beat a down one your quick down jab you can always definitely beat an uppercut so once again this video is very much by request here a lot of people are struggling 
with this concept here because Mortal Kombat is not like Street Fighter in this regard. In Street Fighter, almost all attacks are mids or lows or overheads. There's very few true highs where if you duck, the uh, move will just clear go over your head. In Street Fighter, that kind of concept is fairly rare. In Mortal Kombat, it's the standard. Uh, a lot of your fastest, best moves are going to be highs that are able to be ducked under. And if you can duck under it, then, you know, you can try to steal your turn back by a variety of reasons. Uh, so, in that regard, I hope this video has helped you out in just trying to understand how this concept works in Mortal Kombat 11. Anyways, that is it for this video. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat.